we've been watching the polls, you know, and the polls, uh, regardless of how accurate you think they are or not, and, you know, the McCain people keep saying the mainstream media is wrong and the polls are wrong, but, you know, they've been steadily favoring Obama, um, and McCain has been slipping and slipping and slipping. I'm looking at the latest electoral map here in which there really are now only about five toss-up states left. Elections are won in 24-hour cycles, and, and, you know, early voting's going on, so again, those people are voting without the latest news before the, you know, the election. That's why I always vote you know, on Election Day. Senator McCain can hope that the economy will suddenly turn around, which is not very likely. Um, that is now his biggest liability, and unfortunately, presidential candidates really can't do anything about the economy. They can talk about what they would do if they were president. But for McCain now, it's, I think, to try and develop a consistent message and not uh, hit so many different themes which are conf apparently confusing voters. John McCain actually had kind of a, a kind of picking, you know, he had a difficult choice in what to do. You know, he's made his political life uh, primarily by appealing to independence as a maverick. I think what he was trying to do, but then, you know, you have your choice out there. Do you appeal to the mavericks? To, do you appeal to the middle? Do you appeal to those independent voters that have been kind of your bread and butter in some of these campaigns? Or do you excite the social base of the party? Uh, I think he tried to do both with Palin's selection. Uh, she certainly does excite the base. Uh, she is still drawing huge crowds. In the last election, I was surprised how much young voters actually did show up to vote. This time around, I think it is going to be greater than ever before in history. So I think the big thing is for Obama is that he needs to motivate those young people to turn out. You know, there's a lot of discussion about the youth vote, and certainly I have been one that championed, you know, the fact that youth are voting in greater numbers, especially since 2004. But you also have to consider that even though they're setting record numbers, they voted at 47% in 2004. That was nine points over 2000. That's great, but still the rest of the country is voting, voting at 64% average of overall voters, which means that that's thrown in there, so it's actually much greater. In 2006, um, another, you know, the change election, the youth vote was 24%. Again, three percentage points up over 2002. And during the primaries, which are nine points up over 2000, they're voting at around 18% in the primaries. And so again, these are not huge numbers. No matter who wins, this is gonna be an, a historic election. You're gonna e either have an African-American uh, as president of the United States, which is certainly a, an enormous accomplishment given where we started, it, just in my life experience, uh, I went to military school in Florida when uh, blacks were not allowed in lunch counters and when hotels and motels were black and white and um, race separation was complete and there were no blacks on television. Um, amazing. Uh, so that's a huge accomplishment um, and says how much the U.S. is changing. And if Sarah Palin becomes vice president and McCain becomes president, you'll have the oldest president and the first woman in American history as vice president. So you can't lose this year. This is a great year for benchmarks and landmarks and for everybody slapping high fives and saying we did something that has never been done before. And that's pretty interesting.